pray for those who do not know how to pray. Father God, we pray for those that are in a hospital and in institutions, for those who just, those who just don't, those that are not doing right, by God, by you, or by their friends, by their loved ones. Father God, we just pray for our government um, today. We, we pray for our president. We pray for our friends. We pray for our loved ones on today, Father God. We pray for our children more than anything in this world, Father God. We love our children. We know our children love us, but we just, we just hand them over to you on today, God. Make them right, Father God. Give them a clean heart. Give us a clean heart. Show us how to interact with them to give them get them on the right path, Father God. On today, Father God, I ask that you give me a clean heart and the knowledge and the understanding to read your word and to give the right meaning and understanding to those that may be watching or understanding or just to myself, Father God. In your name, you all pray. Amen. Amen. Prayer. Amen. You always have to remember this even before we teach. Not one man carries all the gifts. And I'm pretty sure she could talk that to your mom. Yes. Every person, that one person does not carry all 52 gifts. I heard one woman told me, I told her, I said, I'm going to reveal it and told her to tell you this. Oh, I know everything, Elder. I said, do you? I said, mm -hmm. start running through your mirror since you know something. <laughs> I heard another from her. Why? <coughs> Since she knows so much. Isn't that a beautiful girl? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move wow. on this morning. But she knows what I'll be talking about. <laughs> so we come in, uh, to you here to January 26th, the 26th day already. Wow. This is the final week of January. We just started 26 days ago. So this is going to be a quick year, as you can see. Uh, we're dealing with the first mission of the 12 apostles. And that is taken from St. Luke, chapter 9, verses 1 through 10. I'm going to read several uh, verses, and I've already given the deacon and service to finish your job. Did you write it down? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Matthew and Mark. Matthew and Mark. I just got Mark, and then... I got one chapter that you didn't tell me where it was from. So. Okay. No, what, what book is this? I got um, chapter 16, 15 to 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that Mark? Mm -hmm. And then I got chapter 4, 17 to 19. Okay, and then there's. Uh, then Acts 1. 1 and 8. Yeah. And uh, forgive me for that. There was Mark 3, 14 and 15. You got that? I got that. You got chapter 4, 17 to 19? Chapter 4, part 4, from 17 to 19? You write it down. Sometimes I'll be typing too fast, too. I did take your keyboard, and I'm pretty sure she did, too. Mark 4? Yeah. 17 to 19? Yes. Yes, I got it. Okay. And keyboarding is not easy. No. You have to make sure the pad is completely still, and you can't really be looking at the keys. <laughs> I didn't have class that for me, right? <laughs> that class twice, but this ain't my calling. But keyboarding is it. It's not very, that's not a very easy, everybody's not called to be a typist. You have to be very cautious. What am I saying? When you give out notes, make sure you type out the right chapter and the right verse. And take your time while you're typing. That's all I'm saying. Amen? So we're coming from St. Luke chapter number 9, verses 1 through 10, and we're dealing with the mission of the 12. And 12 represent birthday the birthing era, where Jesus Christ is birthing churches through the 12 apostles. And it says here, then he called 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. And he said unto them, take nothing on your journey, neither uh, staves nor script, neither bread, neither money, 
neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house you enter into, there abide and thence depart. And whosoever shall not receive you when you go out of the city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. So he's equipping them, he's talking to them, but yet he's nurturing them for ministry. And you have to sit up under a shepherd. Jesus Christ in this text, and the words are in red, so that's Jesus talking. He's teaching them, but you have to sit up under a shepherd. We were just talking about somebody being a minister and saying that you, you're, you're not up under anyone. Well, don't, you will not be successful until you sit up under a shepherd. All sheep need a shepherd. The God is not raising up renegades or rebellion seeds of men and women. He's raising up sons and daughters that is fit for his kingdom. You cannot, by any means necessary, call yourself to preach by your own ministry. That, first of all, is not your ministry. It's the ministry of Jesus Christ. So you need a cover. You need a headship. The Lordship of Jesus Christ. You need a shepherd and an under-shepherd. Whether you sit up under a pastor, a bishop, or an apostle, those are covers. And it is not based on the gender. Stop looking at uh, the gender. People are so still so, uh, offended by women in ministry. If you are threatened by a woman and you a man, there's something wrong with your man. There's something wrong with you. Something has got to be literally, physically wrong with you. If you are threatened by a woman in authority, and it comes from the same God, he made Adam and he made Eve for his glory. Amen? Amen. And I'm reading my notes. The authority over devils, Matthew chapter number uh, 10. Verse number one, chapter Matthew chapter 10, verse number one. <clears throat> and when he had called unto him his 12 uh, uh, disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. And it says here, Jesus wants his followers, I'm reading the footnotes at the bottom of my page, and always read your footnotes so you can get an understanding of the text. And you also read the history of the text. I sound like Bishop Sanders saying that. As we used to read the same way. And it says he wants his followers to rage war against forces of evil by driving out evil spirits and healing the sick. This demonstration of authority is spiritual confrontation and it is confronted by a continuing manifestation of the kingdom of God on earth. That's what it says. God has given us power over the enemy. And don't ever misuse the power that God has given you. You don't have to walk in the sanctuary and come out, tell the devil I'm here. Well, you already know you're here. You don't need to be vindication that you're here. <laughs> you know, all that and flaunting, flaunting your ministry. You know, you got people in this day who are flaunting their ministry. I'm an apostle and you won't have a church. No. He called 12. Some people are self proclaimed. If you got your degree out of the internet, you're wrong. Doctorate degree, apostleship from the internet, and even your bishopric. If you got those off the internet, that is out of order. You sit up under qualified leadership and they will be confirmed and affirmed that you've been called. I know what I'm talking about. I've seen it through the years. Mm -hmm. Verse 2 says, And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And it says here under the footnotes, this is the first time Jesus sent out 12 disciples. And we call them apostles. And apostles in brackets mean they were listeners. So they allow the Savior to equip them. You have to sit up under somebody so they can equip you for ministry and present himself by the word and deed. This instructions given to the 12 according 
to the parallel passage in Matthew was to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's Matthew 10 and verse number 6. Would you turn there if you don't mind? Matthew chapter 10, verse number 6. And after his resurrection, however, Jesus changed the scope to encompass all nations in a commission that is to continue to the very end of the age. This must continue on. To all shepherds that are called elders, evangelists, you'll go, you're to go to the lost sheep and, and compel them to come. Now remember this, everybody won't accept Jesus Christ. I've had people reject Christ when I gave them a track of this one. One man took the track and threw it on the ground. I don't want this. And when they found him, he was on the ground. You gotta be careful. Nobody wants to be rejected. You may read. Matthew 10 and 6 says, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of, the, of Israel. Mm -hmm. And as you go, preach, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse, cleanse the lepers, rinse the dead, mm -hmm. cast out demons freely. You have received freely, get received. Mm -hmm. Freely give, provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money bag. Mm -hmm. So you go, mm -hmm. go ahead. Keep going? Yeah. Nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staff, for a worker is worthy of his food. That's it. In so many words, Jesus is saying, go empty, but go with a word from him. Preach the word, but go empty. Uh, not empty uh, as unto nakedness, but empty as unto the point. When you go, you have to be sent. And this is another thing. We have preachers right here in the city of Buffalo, knocking on doors, asking, can they come and preach? That is out of order. You let the shepherd of the house seek the face of God and ask, who should I invite? You don't come knocking on doors and saying, I'm called to preach. That's out of order. My first bishop, Bishop Apostle Robert Sanders, told us years ago, don't you ever go around here in the city of Buffalo asking, can you come to preach? That's out of order. Let them call you, not you call them. And he was correct. I don't think I can do anything like that. That's, that's, that's disrespectful. You can never go into a man's house and rearrange his furniture. That's out of order. I don't believe in that either. And he was very much correct when he said that. Amen? The gospel writers is clear that Jesus' command to preach the kingdom of God, articles of the kingdom of God, was seldom given apart from the command to heal the sick and to dry out demons. Dry out demons. Uh, also, God intends that the presentation of the gospel today be con or compelled by the same demonstration and of the spirit of power. We must still walk in that same authority, even though we were not there when this all happened. If you believe in Jesus Christ, died, rose again, you're supposed to have these signs and wonders and be filled with the Holy Ghost and have the same demonstration. You got people because they can who they think they call to preach. It's not in the who. Who cares about a who? Y'all see people now hooping on video, ooh, uh, all of that, throwing water in the audience. That's not the anointing. She over here cracking up. Okay. It's the truth, and she's seen it too. Holding their ear, falling all over the floor. Oh, now they got a new one. Rock them and shake them and shake them and rock them. <coughs> that is not the anointing. That is not the anointing. That's a quote. And God is not into theatrics. Standing on top of benches and cracking them and all that carrying on. That is not the anointing. You're in your flesh. I heard one woman tell the church years ago, I won't, forget, I won't say a name. And I was going to visit with her and her family to hear her minister. Oh, Father, you need to come with us. And we went, and she gonna go tell the pastor, I feel the anointing, I feel revival. In the air, I need to come and do a revival. And when we got back in the car, she don't tell us, you know what, I ain't feel no anointing in there. I said, Lord, see, you got a, you got a real problem there. When I see that, I just look. Like, 
This is before being bipolar. I knew then she had a oh. problem. Yeah, you, you got a problem. Something wrong with you. Wow. So you go around here opening doors yourself. But have you been commissioned by Jesus Christ to do that? When Jesus went, he brought the 12 with him. And where he was not received, he went from Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the place of Nazarene, or Nazareth, to Galilee, where his ministry from 30 to 33 took off. He was sent, and he told you, I come not to do my own will, but the will of the Father that has sent me. You have to be commissioned and released from the shepherd of the house to go into the field. And you young ministers, when you are called to or invited to minister somewhere else, take your letter to the pastor and ask his permission. And let him read the letter. When I was up under Bishop Brown, the white E. Brown, every time I got a letter, I took it to his office. I'd get two copies, a copy for him and a copy for me. And if he was here, he'd tell you that's how I did it. And he'd say, you know what? I won't preach the word. Ask permission. Just because a door open does not mean it's from God. Some places you'll never preach again. And you can tell when you walk in the atmosphere. I'm telling you what I've seen from the years. Some places God don't want you in. And every building is not of God. Every pulpit has not been set by God. Some people know how to put a church up, but is it orchestrated and illustrated by God? You can tell when you walk in there, you know, if you don't feel the anointing, he's not in there. Mm -hmm. Like I went to go hear somebody here recently a couple of months ago. I'm on the bus. And the Lord whispered to me and said, that man you want to hear won't be here. I went in there and asked her, she said, so and so coming? She said, oh no, he's not coming. Just as clear as I'm talking to you. The Lord don't lie. Mm -hmm. That's the word of knowledge. Person, places, and things. Amen? <clears throat> and it says here, in order to meet Satan's challenge in these days, churches today should not compare themselves with other churches, but in this New Testament message and pattern, are we seeing the experiencing the kingdom of God as did the early Christians. And this kingdom of God is near us. If not, why not? We should have the same demonstration and power that we see in the latter years should be in these years, he's saying. And this is Jesus' teaching, uh, as Luke has wrote down the teachings of Jesus Christ. Luke himself was a physician, but he was called to be an apostle. When you are uh, called to be an apostle, some people say Luke was not an apostle. Some people even say that Luke was an evangelist. I don't know where people get that stuff from. I've never heard that before. Have you? Mm -hmm. He was an apostle. But the only people that were relinquished from their roles was Judas. And he was placed by Magnus. So you need to know your Bible. When you start misquoting, we misquote a lot. And it says here, uh, going back into the verses, Verse 3 and 4, and he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staves, nor scrip, neither bread, neither their money, neither have two coats apiece. Don't bring anything with you when you're going out. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever house you enter into, there abide, and thence depart. When after you finish preaching, and they give you the benediction, you depart. Don't go hang around the people. Because they'll start pulling on your spirit. You leave there immediately. Don't fool around and talk around. Those people will set you up, even in the church. Verse 5 says, And whosoever will not receive you. Now this is going to help a lot of prophetic people. And whosoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet, for a testimony against them. That means if people are not receiving this ministry, like I told you, I said, this is going to be shut down one day. And I'm not speaking of this long ministry. I have other places that ministry. States, countries, whatever God says. If people are not receiving you, shake the dust off your feet. Leave that house. Mm -hmm. 
I've had to. I never get one vision I see. In 2016, 2016, I was at a church. I won't say there. <clears throat> and I was on a three-day fast, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, even going into Wednesday, four days. And that morning, I didn't eat breakfast. I was fasting with water. And all of a sudden, I went into a vision. And the pastor's standing here, and I'm standing there. And in between us, was an umbilical cord. Any woman who has a child, you know what umbilical cord is. And I was standing far from the pastor. All of a sudden, the umbilical cord just disappeared. And I seen the means of an aborted baby in between us. And when you abort a baby, that's a little, you know, I don't like to say all that stuff. You know what the means of an aborted baby look like. And I said, Lord, what are you saying to me? He said, well, you are, they've aborted you, and they never fully accepted you. And he said, your assignment is now over. I left that out. And when I left, eight other people left right behind me. God don't lie. You know what I'm talking about? When God tells you to get out of these people's face, not their ministry, you better leave. Because something you're ready to hit that house. Judgment shall start where? First, in the house of God. Yeah. So shake the dust off your feet. If people are not receiving you or the ministry that you carry of Jesus Christ, shake the very dust off your feet as a testimony against that house. And don't be taking all the phone calls and people ask me, why you leave? Are you coming back? Are you coming back? I have two people right now, every time I'm going to visit that one house, one I went to high school, y'all understand him. Me and him, we have to kind of calls. I can, that I can understand. And he said, you Randy, why you leave? And I told him, I said, because the Lord told me to. He asked like he can accept the answer. But you know everybody in the house of God don't know the Lord. Some people are religious. They go to church on a religious asset. They know church protocol, but they don't know the Lord. Amen? Mm -hmm. And one of my friends will call me and say, I need you to come back. I said, no, you're not my covering. You're not my pastor. I cannot obey your wishes. My assignment is over there. So we will not be returning back. They will come back to visit, but we will not be back to stay. You know, sometimes you make a mark on people's lives when you carry yourself in the church. So they probably was admiring the anointing that I carry. And one of them told me, I like to hear you pray. He said, I love the way you pray. He said, how long have you been praying that way? I said, for years. Since 89, this is 2020. 31 years I've been in prayer. They'll tell you. I didn't call myself. He called. Amen? Amen. And it says here, and they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. And here I, uh, the, the T wrenched, or T wrenched, T wrenched, heard of all, you know, here I was religious, he was not saved. He was religious. Heard all these uh, that was done by him about the things that Jesus was doing and teaching the 12, and he was perplexed. I, mean, I hope I didn't want to do your words, Emma. He was a person. Huh? The whole thing. I did the whole thing. How many, how many verses did I give you? One in ten. Okay, Lord, I'll bless you. It's okay. Lord, I'll bless you. I just got carried away. I'm going to stop at this one. But anyway, <laughs> and he was perplexed because uh, that was said of some that John was risen from the dead. We talk about the return of John the Baptist and Elijah the prophet. And they are supposed to make an appearance when Jesus Christ comes back again. And he was perplexed. And when you were perplexed, that means you don't have an understanding. Your karma, your educational awareness or about the word is not complete. You have no understanding. He did not understand. I got one more verse, and I'm going to turn it over to her hand. I'm going to go to St. Luke chapter 5. And um, that's what happened when you teach about it. Uh, St. Luke chapter 5. Verse 27 to 29. 27 to 29. And it says here, after these things, he went forth and seen a publican named Levi, 
sitting at the, the, the seat of customs, and said unto him, Follow me. And he left all and rose up and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and others that sat down with them. The call of Levi, who was a publican. God always called those who were busy in the natural. But he seemed to see fit that he could equip people who have their natural ability, spiritual ability. When God calls you, you're going to be doing something. A work, a job, and everyone going to call you a full-time ministry. What are you saying? He called the 12 apostles, but he's also still calling us to labor in the vineyard. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please let me finish the defense. Go right ahead. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're back at um, St. Luke 9, mm -hmm. starting at 8, and it says, And by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the old prophets had risen again. Herod said, John, I have beheaded. But who is this of whom I hear such things? So he sought to see him. And the apostles, when they had returned, mm -hmm. told him all that they had done. Then he took them and went aside privately into a desert, place belonging to the city called Bethesda. And again, um, in my notes, you know, the one thing that stuck out to me is it said, you know, the topic that Jesus of this, these verses in this chapter is God wanted us to know that and he sent the 12 disciples out to preach his uh, word and even today, coming to Sunday school or Bible study, he just wanted, he wanted us to get his word. I'm trying to find an easier way to say this. Um, his topics is always to preach the kingdom of God, to preach the good, to get a, a better understanding of his life what we go through. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to be peaches and cream. There's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. So what we go through we, is just a test in time that we go through. Um, just a quick example, this past weekend, my grandbaby, six months, I, did, I didn't feel well. And stuff that kind of came over me, we play music on the TV, and I just get the kick out of her. And she listened to certain songs, and she looked at me like, for real? Mm -hmm. And something told me to put on, um, just to go through certain gospel songs. But I usually always play the songs that I like, and it was this one song that I stopped at, and I held her in my hand, and I never heard this song before. And she was just listening to it. And the last verse of one of the songs was something about in your arms. And she was in my arms. And whatever I was, at that, at that moment, what I was going through, she was in my arms. I felt that that's what God was speaking to me about. Mm -hmm. How I was feeling and what I was going through, it was, she was, that's how he was speaking to me, through her, through the verse of that song, and I began to cry, and she looked at me, and she just had this big smile on her face, and that's, that's the way I knew what I was going through, my bad times became my good times. I began to feel much better. I, I stopped claiming at that minute, that moment, that I wasn't feeling good. My head stopped hurt. Just looking at her that, you know, we have to understand when we read our Bibles and understanding that God speaks through 
our babies through songs. You just got to pay attention. You got to have that understanding. You got to meditate. Quietness. You know, he's, he, he'll, he'll, he'll do it to, to us every time. If you're into your Bible, you read your Bible, and you listen to certain songs, not every song, this is just my opinion, not every gospel song is for everybody. That's true. Okay, and, you know, at that moment, that song was for me. And I began to be happy, and, you know, that's when it came and took the baby from me. I'm like, for real? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in that moment, and here comes the devil trying to step in to say, uh-uh-uh-uh-uh, your head still hurts, and I, and I refuse to accept it. Mm -hmm. And that's how we do things. Mm -hmm. We have to just listen to God, be still, and listen to what he has to say. And that's, to me, in this this verse, this chapter, that's what he's trying to say when he sent out his disciples to these people, to the houses. You have to, if you receive that and really truly understand that, and these disciples come to your house and they want to talk to you, and they may give you the word and they don't believe, you're not going to stop them and you're not going to test them. You're going to receive it, thank you, and then let them go. You're not going to test me now and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know? So for those who, who are going through things in their life, just, you know, take five minutes. Just sit quietly and just listen. He'll tell you, he'll tell you what you need to hear. And just take it and run with it. You ain't got to tell me nobody. It's for you. And with that being said, where are we going next? Well, the destination. Uh, Saint Luke chapter, fourth chapter, verse 14. Saint Luke? Mm -hmm. The same book, Saint Luke chapter 4, verse 14. Jesus and the power of the Spirit. And it says here, Jesus determined in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee. And there went of a fame of him through all the region and round about. His ministry took off. And under that it says, 16, Jesus rejected at Nazareth. Remember what we said earlier? Yeah. They were rejected. They rejected at Nazareth when his ministry took off when he went to Galilee. Which is like the book of Galatians almost. There's some similarities. Uh, but there was a fame. His name was spreading abroad. You will begin to hear about the signs, the wonders, and the miracles. Now, when we come with signs, wonders, and miracles, that ain't got nothing to do with witchcraft. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to correct something, too. I know my name, my real name. Don't get offended with what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> my, real, my name by my mother is Randy George Newman. My real name is Randy George Phillips. That's my father's birth name. I'm named after him. I'm his first seed. So when you see the video, don't act like you didn't hear me. And uh, don't turn it into gossip, because that's crazy. <laughs> but that is my real name. I'm his first seed, so it's like Randy George William Phillips the second. And when we get that done, we'll get it done. And you know what I just said, you heard me. But anyway, people know me by Randy George Newman. And people can hear about your name. People have come to me. And I'm pretty sure they've heard it too. We heard about Pastor Newman, how he prays and prophesied. That has nothing to do with witchcraft. I don't play with that. I'm not into that. I'm not into spiritualism. I'm not into burning candles or incense. But as soon as a man or woman of God start walking in their calling, you got people saying it's witchcraft. Jesus Christ don't even play with witchcraft. So why would he teach any of us to play with witchcraft? That's a sin. Rebellion is viewed as a sin of witchcraft. So I don't play with the dark world or dark realms. I do what the Lord say to do, and I move on. What am I saying? Some of you are born to see psychics and spiritualists. And saying you're saying. So you're mixing 
the two. You're not supposed to mix holy with unholy. God is holy and he's pure. If he give, he's giving you a gift, it will make manifestation. It will go forth. People won't hear about you. Um, what's his name? He used to be in this project. He's not here anymore. He told me one day, and I thought he was just joking. He was at the corner store. No, man, if I heard about your ministry, I thought the man was joking. I had to look at him and he said, I said, really? He said, no, man. Your name is spread abroad about these, these projects. That I didn't know. I don't know if she heard that. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that. Now, they didn't know me now. Now, when I was little, they didn't want to know who heard from me. But as soon as I became a minister, God has to change not just the people, but he got to change you first. He had to deal with raising women first. I've been in ministry now 25 years because of God, not because of myself. I don't boast for myself. I don't promote myself. I promote Christ. You can have 52 gifts, but you better make sure you're pointing to the very God that gave you the gift. Don't take it and put your name in front of it. That's how that's, that you're not supposed to even do that. That's not your, your gift. That's God's gift. You got a lot of people putting their name, this is so and so and so ministry. No, it isn't. That's the ministry of Jesus Christ. You're not supposed to take the glory. And God does not reveal his glory to everybody. I see that by people who have put names. My this ministry is called Prophetic Fire and Word Ministries. Because I walk in the prophetic. And the fire of God is upon me at times. But it's the ministry of Jesus Christ. So don't take the glory and put the, your name in front of the ministry. That's vain. And that's self-centered and self-righteous. But what am I saying? When you're following the ministry of Jesus Christ, do it this way. Amen? I'm going to turn to Mark chapter 9. Did you read those other scriptures? Did you read those other scriptures? Did you read those other scriptures? Say mine. She got them. She's like, take my chapter 9. I shall not lie. Chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. And he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone desires, anyone that desires to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and set him in the midst of, of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me but him who sent me. Now John answered him, saying, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him, forbade him, forbade him, because he does not follow us. But Jesus said, Do not forbid him, for no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterwards be evil of me. Hmm. Wow. Amen. And that's the call of true discipleship. Wow. He had gifts and callings, but they forbid it because they did not understand it because they were religious. And remember this, when you're gifted of God, the religious is going to try to rebuke you and try to shake you and try to say that you're not called. 
What? One man told me, why would the Lord reveal that to you? Huh? Now he's in a mental ward. You got to be careful who's knocking. Amen? Amen. St. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 20. Now you begin to live for Christ. 
Amen? So the message on today was the, the mission of the 12 apostles. St. Luke chapter number 9, verses 1 through 10. And we also read St. Luke chapter 5, verse 27 to 29. St. Luke 5 and 31. St. Luke chapter 4 and 14. And all the other verses coincide with the lesson. So when you study, you just don't study the that many chapters and many verses. When you see those footnotes under those notes, and you see chapters and verses, that goes into the lesson. Be a studier of the word and study the word. Not, don't just quote it, but apply. You apply the word. And that's what God is doing with today. He's still calling us to be men and women of God, pertaining to the cross. And He's still calling people today out of sin into salvation. You need a Savior. Even Mary, the mother of Jesus, needed a Savior. So be blessed on today. We're getting ready to go into morning worship and continue to pray for prophetic fire and word ministries. God bless you. This is nothing. We'll read her scriptures. And have a blessed day. We'll see you in morning worship in a few minutes. God bless you all. Amen.